Hey, all you amazing people out there. Has anyone got cabin fever yet? Me and uh, my dog, Dexter. He's here. He doesn't really talk that much when there's no one else around. And it's kind of weird. There's no interaction side of things. And I, w I was thinking that I'm such an introvert. However, that break, that release when you go to the gym or when you go to the store and that sort of thing and you have a little bit of human interaction, it's kind of, it's kind of nice and I massively appreciate it more than I used to. Just a thought for the day there, but there's so much stress, so much stress going on in the world right now. And most of this stress is brought on by masses and masses of unknowns. We don't know how long this thing is going to last. We don't know how long that you're not going to be able to go out of your house and have that free world that you maybe once had. We're told here in the UK we can only go out for emergency trips to very, very necessary trips to go to the supermarket to get food. And we're able to go out once a day. I believe in France, they've just actually limited it to one hour a day. And you have to stay within a mile of your house and actually go to the supermarket that is closest to your house, which is kind of scary that we're trapped in this world this cabin fever world and a lot of people have boosted anxiety levels right now a lot of people have boosted fear and boosted stress levels because we don't know what is actually going to happen however your health is still in your control it's still within the grasp of your own hands and you can still control how your immune function reacts to this and the more you can improve your immune function, no, this isn't going to be about just going to grab those supplements that you have been told, grab all this vitamin C, grab all this vitamin D. We know that too much can have implications on itself, but we need to make sure that there's an underlying foundation to your health that will allow your immune system to function very well and start to thrive. And I've been speaking with my clients on the Stress Stomach Solution about this because a lot of people, there's this maintenance phase. And I said about it as well, about changing my goals and changing where we're looking at where our goals and our prioritization are. But we've decided as a collective that everyone's goals can still be pushed forward in regards to their health right now. And that is a decision that we have to actively make. Do you want to come out of this situation as a healthier human being, as a healthier individual? Or do you want to come out of this situation as and unhealthier with your health lower than you went in. Because that choice is something, an active decision that you have to make. And a lot of people, when we actually go to the supermarket and I see the bread aisle is sold out, the pasta aisle is sold out, the alcohol aisle is sold out. All these people saying essentials, even over here in the UK, it was announced that off licenses are classed as essential stores. I'm sorry, but alcohol is not essential. However, there are people that are using it as a mechanism to actually survive right now as a sedative. And I'm going to go through a couple of the things that we need to look out for right now because we can improve our health. We don't need masses of equipment. I've been known for my personal training, but my geek, my, my geek side is the inner depth of the health and your immune function really getting to your gut and actually getting that to thrive and work better than it ever has before. And one thing that is going to decrease the effectiveness of your gut health is going to be stress. What is going to decrease the effectiveness of your immune function? Stress. All these different things. But how do we improve it right now? Well, the first thing, and pretty much the most important thing, is your circadian rhythm. So we have our own internal body clock. When we normally wake up and when we normally go to sleep. And as the sun rises, our body should be waking up. And as the sun goes down, we should be switching off. Now, in the normal world as well, technology is pretty crazy. And it's everywhere we look. We have the iPads, we have the phone, I've got a TV here, we've got computers, we've got all these different things that are blurting out these blue lights. And when it comes to the evening, we seem to get more and more engaged with technology than we ever have before. And that is keeping us awake. It's simulating what the sun should be doing throughout the day. And that is going to keep our brain switched on, uh, interrupt your normal 
production of a sleep hormone called melatonin, which helps you relax, your serotonin release and melatonin release, helping you relax and get into that deep sleep. Now, this isn't to say you should cut out all technology for hours before bed, because if you are, like a lot of people, addicted to having your phone and scrolling through it, having your iPad and scrolling through it when you're sitting on the sofa in the evening, then going to like an hour or two hours before bed with cutting your technology off is going to be pretty harsh. So start off with 40 minutes, 50 minutes, start off with 20 minutes, just before bed, switching everything off. Now, I aim to switch off my technology at 8 p.m. Technology as in phone, iPad, maybe watch TV and I go to sleep at around 9 o'clock and read. And everything switched off, 9 p.m., I go and read for maybe half an hour and I'm ready to fall asleep by then. But I do notice that if I'm exercising late, if I'm on technology late, if I'm stressed out more than normal, my brain is wired. And right now, the current economic climate, the, the situation out there is that we're more stressed than ever. So we have to take control of what we can control because the things that are out of our control are what people are more worried about than any other time from my experience. So sorting out your sleep. Now that goes for the morning as well. The most important thing with regards to your circadian rhythm and sleep is keeping your routine consistent. If you're usually waking up at 6 or 7 a.m., keep doing it. Now, I always wake up 6.30, between 6 and 6.30, and then I get up, I meditate, do a Welchery heart rate variability reading, meditate with headspace, and then I keep going on with my affirmations and journaling. We take the dog out for a walk, and then I get on to do my morning routine of exercise. Now, that has been thrown off, so I have a turbo trainer there with my bike, and I go on that for a good hour or so. I've got a punch bag, bench, some very light dumbbells, a battle rope, a chin-up bar and a dip bar. And I'm going to do a good enough workout session. That comes into my routine. What a lot of people do, though, when they wake up, is go straight for that coffee. And that is going to really, really throw off your dopamine reward system and stop your body being able to actually function effectively. Because rather than naturally waking up, it's then being switched on by caffeine and a stimulant, which is then going to impact your sleep later on in the day. And you'll probably find as well, your energy will go up, then later on in the day it'll go down, because caffeine has a half-life between five, six, even seven hours. So if you have your caffeine at 8 a.m., say, 9, 10, 11, 12, 3 a.m., 3 a.m., 3 p.m., it's then going to drop again. And your energy will drop down, so you'll need another cup of coffee. And then what happens you're then going to bed, 9, 10, 11 p.m. You've still got that caffeine in your system, effectively stopping your body, being able to produce this melatonin, which will allow you to get into deeper levels of sleep. Now, melatonin starts being produced four or five hours before you go to bed. Therefore, you're winding down and you're interrupting that process with caffeine. It's going to be detrimental to getting that sleep. Now, when we sleep, we clear out a lot of crap. If we think of sleep as, as if it's an airport, let's look at Heathrow Airport or JFK, whichever place you come from and you have this busy airport, this hub. Through the day, there's flights going off left, right and centre. Maybe not as much right now, but flights going off left, right and centre. Say every 30 seconds, a flight goes down, up, a flight comes down and it's very, very busy. Now in the evenings, there's not so many flights. I've got dog hair in my mouth. There's not so many flights that are taken off. However, there are still a lot of things going on in the airport, and that is just like your body too. Now, when we sleep, we will have the cleaners cleaning everything, restocking going on, all the maintenance going on. And this is what your body does with its detoxification systems, going through all the different processes in the body which need the right levels of hormones, need the right nutrients, and the right levels of your body's stress hormones to be in check. If we're not sleeping in depth, if we're not sleeping effectively enough, then we're not gonna get this done. So you're gonna have a lot more toxins present in the body that aren't gonna allow your body to thrive. Now, as a result, your immune system, the function of your immune system will drop, and it will drop a hell of a lot if you are gonna be up later, 
playing on the PlayStation, scrolling through Netflix, watching all the Star Wars on Disney Plus. Not that I've been actually I have been watching Star Wars, but I've been doing it on the bike. And all these different things where which keep your brain awake. And that same thing goes for exercising late at night. A lot of people won't switch off. So we have to really be conscious of our routine right now. If you want to improve your health, if you want to improve your immune function. Now, the other thing, we've seen so many people talk about home workouts. I've mentioned about it. I was launching a program which was actually going to be for home workouts and minimal equipment workouts before this even came along. We decided a few months ago that that was going to happen. And that includes bodyweight workouts, that includes dumbbells, that includes kettlebells, things you can do at home. But this isn't about that. It isn't about how you get the movement in, it's getting the movement in. Your body has a system called the lymphatic system. Now, you've probably heard about lymph drainage, you've probably heard about the lymphatic system. All these little things in your body, toxins and things called pathogens, which is something that will do damage to your body, has to pass through the lymphatic system. It then gets put through to a node at the end where it's processed and broken down then released from the body. However, if we have very poor lymphatic flow, if our body can't go and drain its lymph system frequently and get rid of the pathogens, we are not going to be able to have a fully functioning immune system and body at all. It's going to get lower and lower the least we move. Now over here in the UK and pretty much every single client that in fact, every client that I work with now has not got access to a gym. They have a little bit of equipment, but the easy thing to do would be grab that six pack of beer, sit on the sofa and watch Netflix crying about all this. That's the easiest thing. In fact, a lot of people are doing that because they're like a deer in headlights right now. They're so stressed out about it. They're overwhelmed about being un out of control with their health, with their stress levels, they're then just doing nothing about it. They can't do everything, so they do nothing, and they're stressed out with it. Now, what can you do for your lymphatic system to be drained and actually be effective right now? Well, you can move. Well, over here in the UK, we're limited to one walk a day. He's got something to say about that. One walk a day. Now, I know that Dexter likes two walks a day. I don't know how they're policing that or anything, but come five o'clock, he needs to go walk again. Now, if you're not going out for that movement and actually taking advantage of it, not only are you not going to get some of the vitamin D from the sun, which is absolutely amazing day out there here in the UK in Norwich, but you're not going to help your system, your lymphatic system work effectively. You're not going to get rid of these pathogens, all this crap that's in your system. You're not going to be able to allow your immune function to increase. Now, that's not to say you need to do 10 rounds on a punch bag, you need to do fairly on press-ups, loads of chin-ups, and all these different things that a lot of people will be doing. It's just simply moving. If you've not got the energy, start looking at your sleep and your circadian rhythm, then start moving. You'll thank me for it. And when it comes to that free 4 p.m. slump, after a few days, you won't have that as much, providing you're going on to the next thing, which is getting good nutrition in. Now, I'm sorry, but bread, pasta, milk, they are not essentials. Getting your good nutrition from colored vegetables, getting fibrous vegetables, green, colorful, different vegetables, loads of different nutrients from real foods, they are the essentials. Getting your protein in, they are the essentials. Not bread, not milk, and definitely not alcohol. If you're concerned about your health right now, which a lot of people say they are, then drinking alcohol is not really going to help you long term if you want your immune system to function, which again, people say they want it to function. So we want to be eating plenty of um, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, kale, spinach, these different things that we can go for, getting your protein in and making sure we get it from mixed different sources to get different amino acids in. And that is another thing we need to look at because our body has different sorts of amino acids and they have essential and non-essential. Now, the non-essential 
are the ones which we can produce, our body can produce. However, when we go through stressful times, we have a third sort of amino acids that come into play. And they are conditional amino acids. Non-essential amino acids, which are essential for our body to function. Essential, which means we're going to have to get them from our diet. Non-essential, we still need those. And we aren't going to produce those as effectively. They become conditional if we're too stressed. And we need to make sure we look at our stress function in order for the body to produce them. Sleep, good food, movement. See where I'm going with this? And that moves on to the last part, which is alcohol. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people don't effectively break down alcohol. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying, Ollie, but I love to have a drink. I have to have that glass of wine to switch off. Why are you having it? And I think the awareness is key here. Awareness is crucial because some people can have their alcohol for enjoyment. But a lot of people, especially in this situation, they're having it to de-stress. And usually having it in the evenings as well. Not to say go and drink alcohol for breakfast, but having it in the evenings, then going to interrupt your sleep. Ah, but alcohol sends me to sleep. You will not get your deep restorative sleep. Imagine this. All those workers at Heathrow Airport actually go to work in the evening, but they are massively hanging. They're all tired they're not going to get their work done as effectively. That's the same thing going on in your body when you have alcohol. Imagine that. All that cleaning that's got to wipe all the skid marks and crap where all the guys have managed to piss around the toilet seat. Uh, they're not doing that. So you go there in the morning and all the crap is still there. You then go to go on your plane and it hasn't been fueled up properly or it hasn't been maintained properly because those workers were hanging. That is the same thing that is going to go on in your body. If you're drinking loads of alcohol, even a little bit of alcohol, every single night, as a release, we need to look deeper into, do you really want your immune function to be increasing at this time? Because a lot of people, even now, even now, a lot of people will be saying they want to improve their health. And yes, I know a lot of people that take a financial hit. I've taken a financial hit with a couple of clients that have had to drop out because their businesses have taken a big financial hit. So you haven't got as much exposable, uh, disposable income that you used to have. But when we look at your health, it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg unless you actually don't improve your health. It could cost you an arm and a leg, literally. Now, think about what I've said here. Improving your circadian rhythm via sleep uh, movement to get your lymph lymphatic system working, getting the right foods in there. It's going to help manage your blood glucose levels, which is going to stop you getting very hangry. It's going to stop you having that high, low energy and going to those snacks, going to those crap that, that you have in the cupboard and all these different things that are in stores, in supermarkets, very highly available, unless you're looking for pasta and then it's like gold dust and you don't need pasta, you don't need bread, then we have to be honest with ourselves because with all this fear that's going on, all this stress that's going on, do you really want to improve your health? And if you do, you can. And as I said about the financial side of things, I spoke about my stress stomach solution and my clients working with that. If you need help with your health, drop me a message. We will work out where you are financially in order to get you the accountability you need. Now, if you can afford the full price for health coaching with myself, which would include your training, your nutrition, mindset work, we would be checking in, getting you the accountability and getting you the results. If you can afford the full package, great. But if you haven't got the finances that you once had or you're not in a position but you still really want to improve your health, still drop me a message and we will talk about it. We will see what contact we can actually give you without taking the piss out of my existing clients because they have invested before this happened and are still investing now and we can make it work for you. Think about that. Do you want to improve your health? If so, the Stress Stomach Solution is for you right now. Guys, thank you for watching.